Okay, so welcome to this town hall meeting. Um, it's great that so many um, of you are here. We seem to get more and more interest as, as we get uh, closer to go live. So this session is all about cutover. Um, I'm going to give you a sort of layman's um, explanation of what cutover is. Um, then I'm going to, um, and that's just going to be from a systems perspective. It's not going to be operational, it's just going to explain what cutover is and why it's important. And then we've got um, Robbie from HR, we've got Steve from finance, and we've got Richard from ITS to talk about the very practical impact of cutover. So how it's going to affect you operationally. Um, and this is really important because it's actually, it's a partnership. If we get this right, it's, we've got to work in partnership on this. Um, we've, um, the, the communications, some have come out, some haven't, but we are explaining all of that during this presentation. And uh, it's going to end with Emma, who's going to give a, a college perspective, so a slightly different perspective on how cutover will impact everybody. Okay, so what is cutover? So cutover is, if we don't get cutover right, we can't go live. It's absolutely critical <laughs> to go live. And you will see there, I don't want to panic you, but you will see there that actually we've only got 102 days to go before we actually go live. So we are really steaming, full, full steam ahead um, towards go live. So cutover, in its most simple terms, is the planning, management, and execution of all of the tasks and activities that we have to perform in order to switch the processes into the new systems or to cut over to the new systems. That is incredibly complex. Um, as you may have heard us say already, uh, Nucor has actually got the biggest footprint of any Oracle Fusion implementation in Europe. It doesn't mean to say that we've got the, the biggest number of users, but actually the number of modules that we are implementing across a really broad area of activity makes it the largest in Europe. So it is really complex. Just to give you an idea, there are 150 integrations that take data through into our system that we have to manage. We have to make sure are appropriately dealt with and managed during cutover. So it's an extremely complex process. When, um, when we first started talking about it, Kate gave the analogy that really helped me understand what it meant. And she gave an analogy of a train timetable. And if you can imagine that you've got a national train timetable, and what you have to do is plan the trains getting into the appropriate stations at the appropriate time so that all the passion passengers can get off to get their different connections. That's <coughs> what cutover is. It's actually sequencing how we move the data, the information that we all use on a day-to-day -day basis, how we move that data from our current legacy systems into our new system. So you can see that we have to get it right, and getting it right will mean that there will be less noise <laughs> at, at Go Live, that we will ensure that you have the best possible experience at Go Live. But, as I say, it is complex. And in order to do it, we have to work really, really closely together. Um, so we have been working with finance, <laughs> HR, IT for many weeks leading up to this. Um, and that's the way that we will ensure that it is, it is as, it's as successful as we can possibly make it. So why do we need cutover? Well, we need cutover because we need to pay people um, when the, um, the system goes live. We need to be able to pay our bills. We need to be able to receive our money. We need to make sure that the data that we take from the old system, A, is clean, and I know a lot of you in this room have been working very hard to ensure that all of the data cleansing is, is being done before cutover, and that's extremely important. But we need to ensure that the data is clean and that it is accurate when it gets into the new systems, because that is when you will see it, and that's when you will be using it. And it's to ensure that the new processes, as they transfer into the new systems, 
will be as accurate and as easy to use for you as possible, so that there's continuity between those two, um, two um, steps. Obviously, there's going to uh, be disruption, but getting cut over right will minimise that disruption. Um, it's, it's not possible to transfer this data while still using the system. So there is going to be some downtime, and this is why it needs to be <coughs> planned so meticulously. This is why we're working so closely with our finance, HR, and ITS colleagues in order to make that happen. So what does this mean for you? This means that we absolutely 100% need your support. We need you to understand the operational impact that, these, that the system downtime is going to make on your day-to-day -day lives. We need you to understand it and we need you to start planning for it. Now, there will be lots of help. You know, when, when you're not on your own. The business partners right across the university are fully um, appraised of what's got to happen. But it's about your support in making this the best it can be. Um, as I said, the, some of the systems will be down and that's why we need to plan meticulously and you need to be aware of the dates by which certain things have to happen. The cutover period that we're actually talking about is from December right the way through to go live. Um, and so it is um, important that you understand, as I say, the specific dates and that you, you work together with your colleagues and with your business partners in order to understand the impact. So that's cut over from a very uh, systems process, from a systems perspective. What I'm going to do now is to hand you over to, um, to Robbie Robbie's going to go through what cutover means in HR terms, um, and he will, um, he will talk in detail about that. Um, what I will ask is if you have questions, and I'm sure you, you will have questions, and we have timed this, uh, um, this session so that there is maximize, we can maximize the time for questions, but can you leave them to the end? So can you note your questions at the end? and we will endeavor to um, answer them at the end so that we don't uh, disrupt the flow, because it is important, as I say, that you get the entire picture. Okay, over to Robbie. Hi, everybody. Uh, so, um, yes, I'm joined uh, with colleagues from HR, um, Matthew Knight, interim uh, director of HR, and Charlotte Bowles and Monique Myers, who will particularly be helpful, I think, when we come to the, to the Q&A, because they're really, really uh, close to the detail. And uh, do forgive me if I uh, reach for my notes now and again, because it's not the kind of thing I want to wing. It's, I've got some important information that I want get it, to get it right. Um, so, as Charlotte uh, says, we've taken the system cutover deadlines um, and then take it and, and work back and taking into consideration uh, Christmas, uh, the anticipated volume of work that we think will come in as a result of these new um, uh, of these deadlines and some external requirements as well. Um, we've got some clear operational deadlines which we want you to, to know, to share and to work to over the next few months. Um, uh, so we want you to really to remember two key dates if you remember nothing else from this presentation that I'm giving. Um, uh, and most of you, if not all of you, will have seen these through the, 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 the comments that went out about two weeks ago um, already. Uh, so the 12th of December um, is the deadline for sending vacancies to HR via WCM. Now you need to remember the date, but also you need to remember that the, the, the information needs to come to us fully, fully formed, fully complete. So that's job evaluated, financial approvals from the budget centre, advert, advert written. Fully ready to go for us to, to advertise. So please plan well in advance so that you've, you've got your job evaluated, you've got the financial approvals in place, so there's no, there's no messing about after the 12th of, of December. Um, the 12th of December is also the deadline for us to receive the details of candidates you would like us to send uh, interview uh, invitations for. Okay? Now, if you miss this deadline, it's not the end of the world, but it just means that HR won't be able to do that for you. So you can still pick up the phone, you can still send emails out, but you would need to arrange those interviews for any interviews that are happening during that cut over period, i.e. After, <coughs> after the 5th of January. If you do that, we would, still like, we would still like to know so we can keep a handle and support you in, in those processes. So that's the 12th of December, advertising and, and interview interviews. The 17th of December, which is the Monday, the last Monday before Christmas, that's kind of for everything else. Um, and, we, and we put the key ones here. So setting up new joiners. Now, this is really, really important. Um, 
uh, if we don't receive the details in time, your new starters will not get paid in January, if they start in January, and we have not received the, the new joiners information, which is a pretty rubbish thing for anyone, but especially after Christmas, and especially as a new starter, we just do not want it, we just do not want it to happen. Um, uh, we will actively chase all the new starters that we know about uh, during this period, and we just really appreciate your support in reiterating that message to anyone you, you send an offer to or um, make an offer to in, in, in December. Just really make sure, reiterate the importance of them getting that information back to us. So the less last minute chasing we have to do, the better. Um, 17th of December is also the date to notify us of any levers during that period, as, as, best, as best you can, as best you, as best you know it, um, and any other contractual changes. Because again, if we don't know it after the 17th, it won't happen. So a lever may leave in January, and we will pay them for the entirety of January, because we will not be able, if we don't know that they're leaving, we won't be able to stop it. Um, um, and it's, it's, it's very important that we process levers. Um, sorry, so that's levers, and, and any contractual changes, you know, hours up and down, all that kind of thing, we need to know by the 17th of December in order to effect to affect that. Really, really important, but it's, it's, it's exceptionally important when it comes to international, international staff, staff that we may um, uh, sponsor, because there's a certain requirement for us to notify the Home Office of any, of any changes as well. So, in a nutshell, these are the dates, 12th and 17th, a Wednesday and a Monday. Um, these are the dates in order for us to achieve those system deadlines. We put a lot of thought into them, and, and this is, this is the, the, kind of the latest we can go for you. They really are hard deadlines. So please, as individuals and as groups, plan, plan your recruitment campaigns and starter dates for staff around these dates. Uh, please share these dates with your team, um, uh, as, it's, it, as it's, it's imperative that they are, that they are, they are well known. Uh, now, we're not doing this on our own. We're working with the HR business partners, um, and they are putting themselves out there to, to, to work with you. Uh, there will be constant reminders to team meetings, to operational groups, however else you interact with your business partners, they will be there to help you, and you must also contact them. If there's anything that concerns you, uh, if you've got any specific questions in relation to your area, they are there working with us. And um, so a, a really good example of um, collaboration around, around this is it's actually in this college. So the MDS uh, uh, administration and HR teams have come together to form a kind of new core cutover team to help collate information, work with academics, um, which is great, so they've got a handle on the volume of work, when it might come in, and that gives us a good line of sight so we can, we can plan our work accordingly. And I understand that these, these groups are actually being set up in other colleges as well, and I really think that's beneficial, and if areas of professional services would wish to do that as well, I think that would, that would really help. Um, yeah, so that's, that's all I really want to say, and, and we, kind of, we are really on your side. You know, we, want to, we don't want to disrupt business, we want things to, for business as usual to continue as far as is possible, and as I say, if you stick to those deadlines, hopefully that will be achievable. Thanks very much. And then we'll take questions on particularly the HR aspect at the end. And who am I handing over to now? Yeah. Thank you. Afternoon. I'll just to skip us on to... expecting to speak to. Um, yes, cut over in relation to finance. Not quite as simple as just turning one system off and turning on another. Um, it is very, very complicated for us to work through in this, le this, this le level of detail. And we're not there yet in terms of what the actual dates will be for all of this. Um, the one date that I know has been actually um, shared with everybody is the fact that the final date for everything to go through the system is the 18th of January, when the actual system will finally be cut off and we won't have access to those systems at, at, at all. Um, the reason for the complexity around it, we have 42 different systems that actually feed into our current finance system. And we need to work out how those interact with each other and what the implications are of switching one off before another. Uh, and we are working through that working very closely with our IT colleagues in terms of mapping that, and we have a, currently have a plan that is 600 lines long with numerous actions under each of that as to how that actually works. Um, to say it's complicated, 
is a little bit of an understatement, but we will get there and we're working very hard to get there. We are expecting to have a final run book on all of those processes with us by the 5th of November. I hope it doesn't go with a bang or go up in smoke. Oh, I've got a laugh. Hey. Um, the plan then is on the 7th of November we are meeting as a team uh, across the finance office to actually put in what we believe are the final cut-off dates for each of the transactions and how that all flows through. That will go out in the final communication plan across the university on the 15th of November. Is that enough time for everybody to actually plan what they're going to do and what they need whilst there's no system to actually buy anything, get any goods or services in, get any supplies in to anywhere in the university? Um, we think it is, because we can actually start that planning now. We should all have a plan in place as to what goods or services we're going to need during, during that time, time period and, and what's needed from the finance system in relation to that and actually plan ahead. So I've put up there risk management. Risk management is all about making sure that we, you have what you need out of the finance system, what you need in terms of goods, goods and services through Proactus, through Science Warehouse or any other feeder system that is needed during the time that we don't have any ability to buy anything. I'll come on to what I mean by that in, in, in a little while. So you can actually place an order now for a delivery date during that cutover period. So that suppliers have that order way in advance, but for a delivery date in that cutover period. So they can deliver it on the 30th of January if you put an order in now. So thinking about that, thinking about that planning ahead, we'll start to mitigate some of the risks that we have in terms of not being able to get supplies and services. I hear about the fact that you know, we've got um, lots of scientific material that's needed, lots of medical material that's probably needed, which is time sensitive in, term, in, in terms of the, of the need, need of, the, of, of those supplies and therefore the, we need to have proactive, we need to have a fine system that gives us all of those goods or services in a timely manner. Delivery date, 30th of January, it'll arrive 30th of January and you'll be able to utilise those goods in advance and you can order that now. Moving on to research <coughs> finance, um, Work Tribe costing and pricing is going to be cut off on the 11th of January for three weeks. Does this mean that we can't do any research finance costing and pricing during that time period? No. We have to get the abacus out, we have to get the calculator out, we have to do it by hand and we will have resources available to support and do that if we, if, if we need to. So thinking about it, 18th of January is when I've said the final cut-off date is. If you send an order through on 18th of January, there's a high risk it won't happen. If you send that order through way in advance of that, the likelihood is you will get what you need. Therefore, Science Warehouse needs time for all those transactions to flow through afterwards and get the, pay to get the payments through to get, the, to get that in. Or we practice orders, making sure the supplies are set up making sure you've got uh, all the relevant <coughs> details on that requisition so the order can be processed, making sure that all the, if there's need, a need for a business case or a need for, for, for sign off of those over 25,000 for those things that are coming through, through research uh, and certainly on the, on, on the capital side, the earlier the better is, 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 is from, from my perspective. Um, I hear rumours about the fact that when we've got no system, everybody's going to jump to using their purchasing cards. No. There will be no access to purchasing cards. They will all be stopped because of the interdependencies and the feeds that that information has into that process. So don't go anywhere using your purchasing cards because you won't be able to. The only way of getting things during that time period is to order it in advance. If there are any concerns about any, anything in relation to that, please get in touch with us, three business partner, directly to me, uh, or, any, or any of the, uh, of, of, of the team, to be able to work through what the arrangements can be to, to, to sorting that out. There is one thing we will all be able to do during cutover, and that's use key travel. <laughs> we can travel during this time period. We can book our travel. There is something we can do. So um, please, if you do need to travel, don't put on the purchasing card. Don't put it through expenses because you won't be able to claim expenses during that time period either. Um, but put it through 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 key key travel. 
Um, so all I'm asking for is for strong, robust communication with us about what your needs are, so that we can plan in advance and get things sorted, uh, and your support to be able to, to, to get us through that time period. Planning is key, and we need to start thinking about what you need now. So as I said earlier, next steps, final run book we will get on the 5th of, no 5th of November. We will have plans circulated on the 15th of November as to what the key cut-off dates are. As we just heard from HR, those will be the key cut-off dates because we are going to leave it as late as possible to allow you to do things. However, you need to make sure the information in there is accurate, is robust, and is correct to be able to, for those things to happen. Because we can't have purchase orders go back, backwards and forwards during that time frame because we will miss any key, key, key deadlines. So I'll just finish off by saying, let's work together, let's get this right, and let's make sure we have a successful cutover. Thank you. Afternoon all. Uh, I did joke that I'd do a Theresa May by doing a dance, but I think I'm going to go for the former party conference where I'm going to cough throughout. Um, my first big promise assurance is we will not decommission systems or servers outside the cutover planning. Uh, now that means to, to everyone here, we're not going to go rogue. We're not going to turn things off before other things are there to be turned on. We will follow the cutover plan to, to the letter. Um, at this point, I was going to throw up a, a photo of our, uh, Stuart Atkins, our data centre manager, with a fistful of plugs. However, the irony of accidentally doing something. Um, no, it, it won't be the case. Um, I don't get the sense that anybody particularly wants it for any false sense of nostalgia to keep Alta HR and some of our legacy systems any longer than they possibly have to. However, the onus is on us to make sure that uh, there are compelling reasons for whether it be uh, to evidence career histories for REF or uh, research salary reports for an audit. Uh, IT are making sure that you've got provision to keep the lights on in that period. Yes, there will be manual admin processes as, as Steve's outlined and as, as uh, Robbie's alluded to as well. Uh, but IT don't go away. We're there to support you where we can. Um, on that risk management point, the, the restriction we all must just be mindful of is that we, can't, we can do that so far, but up to where it puts at risk a multi-million pound delivery, um, we're not doing anyone any favours if we start to risk those. Okay. Um, the, the other thing on that is further, it's, I think it's a 670-line plan. It evolves each day. Um, but yes, it, we are working to that. Um, <clears throat> So, as well as cutover, um, IT have got the onus of decommissioning on top of that. Um, so that means in places there's the belt and braces. So where we're saying as a business process we will stop X, Y, Z, uh, we in IT will make sure that access is restricted or revoked in line with that plan. Um, there is other, the, the obvious thing around decommissioning is that there are feeds to stop. So they, they're 150 plus systems uh, in that uh, training timetable, you'll see why that's relevant in a second, uh, IT will be there to make sure that things are stopped and start, uh, start to play back into other systems at the relevant times. Um, I think the, the other thing for, for us as IT is there's some not so obvious implications of decommissioning cutover in that we've got commercial aspects to work through with suppliers, um, we've got some of the um, making sure that if you do go to one of these systems, you're redirected to a helpful page as opposed to just people being left in the dark, receiving um, uh, all manner of uh, web page errors. Um, but the, the big thing for us is in the center of this cutover and decommissioning is there can be no ambiguity around that data management. So at every point, we need to know where that single source of truth is for, for our data. We, we cannot have an instance where we're going to a legacy system and seeing something whilst that data is in flux flowing through to the, flowing through to the new systems. Um, and that is part of that collaborative effort to make sure we've all got that shared understanding at any one point. Um, and the, the, the slightly dirty word about failback. Um, there is the onus and accountability is on us to make sure that that go, no go, 
if it's a no-go, which there have been colossal commitments to ensuring that is not the case, and it's not foreseen that it will be, but we, 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 we as an employer will make sure that we, we are ready with things in warm standby to, to pick up the slack if necessary. But I, as of today, as of that detailed run book, the efforts are there to ensure that that is not a, a, a likely outcome at all. Um, my final one, Charlotte, I, I didn't know you were about to use an analogy about a train station. <laughs> Honest to God. Um, I see genuinely art in the middle. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm told red line was central. <laughs> you know, that was, again, accidental, I promise. Uh, but it is just to focus that collaborative effort. Yes, there's a 670-plus line plan showing where all these interconnects are, showing where we're working in parallel, collaborating. Um, but that, that, in essence, is exactly what it is. Um, what I'd ask for operationally, so this, this the purpose of today is to look at some of the operational impacts on your areas. You can see IT, we are going to be pulled in a number of directions. We have to keep lights on certain BAU things as well. Um, the, if I can ask for patience and uh, pragmacy from, from everyone that we work together, and if there are things that we, we can't react to in our normal four-hour response time, um, it's because we're making sure that the the new system's going live, that everyone gets paid, that um, our, 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 we are focused on priorities. Um, otherwise, just to echo some of the dates there, um, yes, the, the one thing from an IT perspective is, uh, just as Robbie's outlined with, we can't have new staff coming online later through January, uh, it's the same with associates. So I would ask that for anyone who knows that there are uh, casual members of staff, uh, sorry, casual workers, which need access to IT systems, that those associate requests go through as soon as possible because we're working to the same dates. So on the 17th of December, we need to make sure that you, we're not going to have people join on a casual basis that need IT access because those are also going to be fed across to, to Fusion um, and we can't have people in flux. But otherwise, as it shows above, IT really are just following the line of business and making sure that we're there for, for all sides. Uh, and that really is it for me. Thank you, Charlotte. Um, yeah, so we've heard lots of information there and it can at times feel slightly overwhelming. I think the key message for me is not to be overwhelmed. I think the message to all staff is that there is a shared and collective commitment to cutover and to systems implementation. And hopefully what you've heard from the prior presentations and the brief outline that I'll go through today is that ethos of partnership working together is what will get us through that effective cutover and into the brave new world of Nucor in the new year. So you've heard from HR, finance and IT, um, just I want to give you a brief overview of the college's approach to practical implementation and we're very much in the heart of that now. So the oversight for quite some time now has been through the director of, directors of operations, so myself and my colleagues across campus working closely with the new core team, with our colleagues in the functional areas. As Robbie mentioned earlier, we've already started and have in place in most colleges now if not, we'll, we'll do uh, very soon new core working groups that are bringing together the relevant operational, uh, administrative, HR, finance, academic colleagues around the table so we can be exploring at a local level the details of practical implementation, what that means and how we support and prioritise activity. So we understand the system on the one hand and critically important, we understand the academic and business needs and how we can respond to that and work together to make sure we we drive that implementation as effectively as we can. So that the, you, you've heard this already, but the ethos of that is being integrated and, and collaborative. Those groups, and you heard briefly from Robbie about the MDS group, really are looking at those local priorities, what that means, making sure HR, finance, IT colleagues have a real shared understanding of that. We're going through very detailed planning and offering advice. Um, and ultimately, as you've heard from... Um, 
from Robbie, Steve and Richard. It's about identifying those activities that we can bring forward. Uh, equally, there will be activities that we can defer to after cutover. So it's being realistic and really practical about how we move forwards in implementation. I uh, wasn't intending to go into the detail of that, but happy to, and there are others in the room who can help support those discussions if we've got really practical questions. And that really was the main things that I wanted to say. Uh, and from a college perspective, your college contacts, in the first instance, the directors of ops are there as primary contact, as well as the HR finance business partners, who everybody will know well. Um, but most importantly for me, I did want to particularly name the individuals up there on the screen, so Craig, Joe, Julie, Brian, and Erin, who from a college professional services perspective, working with the academic community, are at the heart of this planning, and they've done an awful lot of work to date with their teams and with others, and will continue to do so over the next couple of months and, and beyond once we're in the new core world. Um, so that was it from a college perspective, and then finally just to reiterate, I recognise within the room we've got people from colleges and from other parts of campus, other bits of professional services. Certainly this model, this collaborative approach, uh, is being adopted in uh, parts of other parts of professional services as well. So it will, it will look and feel similar. Okay, so that's the formal part of, of uh, the session. Um, I hope it's uh, provided you with the context, the system context, why we have to do cut over. <laughs> But more importantly, it's given you uh, confidence that it's under control. It's given you the mechanism to actually go and speak to your colleagues, your HR business, um, finance business partners, if you have any um, concerns. So um, it's open now for questions. We will be uh, capturing the questions and, um, as ever, putting them in our FAQ se section on the intranet. Um, it's always worth looking there if you've got queries uh, first. Okay, so any questions? Louis? Alison? I think um, oh. what we do call today are, are the ones that are needed by night team. If there are need to be an emergency um, situation that arises, we can talk to your HR business partners as quickly as possible and we'll see what we can do to come to an emergency situation. Oh, yep. For associates. So, Alison, do you want to reiterate what happens with staff or Robbie on that?
Speak up, please. Yes, it is. Yes. So, did everybody hear that there's a, um, a page or, or a, an area on the New Court intranet where all of these dates, it's a central repository for everything, all of the dates to do with, with New Court and when the dates are published from finance. So, um, work link dates are up there now. Uh, the HR dates are up there now. We'll have finance dates on the 15th of November. So it's a good place to keep your eye on if you, um, if you just want to refresh yourself about the various